What's going on, everybody? Justin Stivers. Thank you guys for tuning in for another episode of The Stivers Show, where we talk about all things real estate, probate, estate planning, finance, marketing, and, uh, and sometimes just some random stuff that I feel like, feel like talking about. So today, though, uh, we're, talking, we're talking marketing. Um, you know, at the time of filming this, we're Friday, July uh, 10th. We're still, you know, world is still going crazy. People, you know, we're, we're opening back up, we're shutting back down and, uh, and a lot of businesses are, are hurting out there. And so, you know, marketing is always top of mind for, for most businesses, for most professionals, um, you know, getting the next client, keeping the clients happy, uh, you know, so that you've got revenue coming in, you've got money coming in to keep the lights on and obviously make a profit and whatnot. But it's interesting during, you know, everything that's going on right now, I feel like a lot of people I've spoken with have have taken their their foot off of marketing or some of the the traditional avenues have changed uh, with everything going on. And and it's like, you know, now more than ever is when you got to be doubling down just because money's not coming in. You can't stop marketing. You can't stop trying to bring in, you know, in my case, uh, new cases or if you're, you know, financial advisor, new prospects, new clients you know, real estate agent, new, new leads to, to new listings and all of that. And, and for whatever reason, I think it's just people get, you know, they, they don't want to spend the money. They're afraid to spend the money. You know, that, that old saying, spend money to make money, which is, you know, to some extent very much true. If you, if you are not fueling, you know, throwing money into the, to the system to, to pump out more leads, when, when whatever happens at the end of this, when, when the restrictions are lifted, you know, it's not going to matter that you didn't, that you saved, you know, a thousand bucks, you're not going to have any new clients coming in. So, so marketing still, you know, now more than ever, it's, it needs to be your focus uh, in whatever business you're in. And one of those, one of those, you know, tools that I think is talked about in, at least in the circles that, I, that I'm in, um, you know, but one of those, those marketing tools that I think um, is not as common as you would think is, is print newsletters. And so that's really what we're going to be talking about today is, is print newsletters. So a physical mailed out newsletter. And I think it needs to be mailed monthly. Okay. So I don't think it's enough that you mail it, you know, quarterly or every other month. I think it needs to be systematic like clockwork every month. Uh, you know, really to the, um, to the same date, pretty much every single month. And the reason is, first of all, you know, electronic newsletters have been and are very much so just overdone, right? And I, I do them, you know, I, I think, I think you still have to do them, but it's so easy. You know, there's so if you open up your email, if you go to your junk mail, like there's just thousands and thousands of, of that stuff, of those, of those newsletters every single week, every single day. And people just don't read them. People don't have time to read them. Most of the time they're boring. They're not interesting. They're just very template, you know, copy and paste, and, and they're not interesting. And with a, with a print newsletter, though, if done right, it separates you. Because how, many, how, how much mail, physical mail, do you all actually get right now? Right. Most of it is thrown in the trash, um, you know, but if it's something that looks, you know, unique, you're going to open it because not everybody's sending mail. It's a little bit harder to do. It costs a little bit more, um, but it's a really effective way to get to get your clients, to get your your prospects, to get your referral sources to remember you. And so we're going to talk a little bit about what what I think works best in those newsletters. But you know, it's one of those things that it's, you know, a lot of people want to spend money on pay-per-click on Google ads and all of that. And, and I think you have to, I, I do think, you know, in most industries, it's necessary to do that internet marketing just because I mean, everybody's searching for you online, but how can you differentiate yourself? And I think the best way to, to, to kind of, you know, show you what I mean is, is talk about how we use it. So we do a print newsletter every single month that gets mailed to uh, our existing clients. So it doesn't matter, you know, if the case is over in our case, most of our clients, 
If we're doing the probate, it's usually a couple of months, six to seven months. If we're doing the estate plan, it's probably, you know, indefinitely. Um, but until the client tells us not to, we're going to send them a newsletter every month. We send the print newsletter to all of our prospective clients. So if a client contacts us uh, either from a lead that we've, we've got for, through our website or we've had the, the consultation with them and we have their mailing address, which is important. You need to make sure you're getting that information. Um, but if we've got their mailing address, we're going to keep sending it to them every single, every single month, even if they don't hire us, um, you know, for, for a variety of reasons. But, you know, first of all, if the, you know whatever space you're in, your prospects, your leads are contacting how many people, right? So I know when they come, when I get an internet lead, one of my, sometimes, not, not always, but one of my, one of the things I'll say to them is, you know, what number of attorney am I that you've spoken with? Because I know that I'm usually fourth or fifth down the list, right? So I know they've spoken with a couple other attorneys before they get to me. I know those four or five other people, if they don't get hired right then and there, they're just sitting around waiting for that client to call them back. Maybe they'll, maybe they'll give them a follow-up phone call or a follow-up email, but, but probably not even that. I want to keep stay in front of that client. They might not have hired anybody. I've had it where uh, just recently we had a client who I had the, the consultation with in, I want to say October and they hired us in May. So, you know, some seven, eight months after the original phone call, they, they contacted us. And one of the reasons I think they did is because every month, even though they had kind of gone cold, we had been, you know, following up with them. They're getting our print newsletter in addition to some other stuff that we do, but they're getting a print newsletter from us every single month. So by the time they're ready to make that decision, I've been in their mailbox every single month reminding them they don't have to go do the search over again. They don't have to try to remember who they spoke with six or seven, eight months ago. They can just, you know, look at my newsletter and call me. So we send that to all of our prospective clients, basically until they tell us, hey, we don't want you to contact us anymore. We're gonna keep sending that, that to them. We also send it to um, uh, referral sources and potential referral sources. So for referral sources, for existing referral sources, you know, a, lot of, a lot of my business specifically comes from, uh, from other attorneys. So I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna, I wanna stay top of mind with them because even though, yes, I think we do a good job, even though, yes, I think our referral source, sources are happy with us, it's possible that, that on, for whatever reason, on one case or on one referral, they just don't remember me. They don't remember the firm. Um, I'm just not, you know, they hadn't spoken with me six, seven months, whatever, and they forget about me, and maybe they just had lunch with somebody who does what I do, and so they send them the case. Well, I don't want that to happen. So I send, we send them uh, print newsletters every single month, Again, just to remember that, just, just to keep the relationship fresh, just so that they remember who we are, so that we're top of mind. Um, so that, again, when that case does come up, they remember they just read a cool article or something that was interesting or, or whatnot, and they're gonna remember us. And when we do that with, with, with uh, prospective referral sources as well, you know, so, so you know, again, this, this is a debate I have with other people, and they say, you know, send it out to as many people as you want which can get costly. Um, if you can afford it, great, go for it. Um, but you know, for perspective referral sources, what, what I like to do is, you know, I'll maybe have a, a target area. I uh, maybe have, maybe it's like a cold referral source where I don't know them quite yet. Um, they, we know some of the pe same people we've been introduced, uh, or maybe it's just like someone who I know would be a great referral source. So we'll add them to the list as well until someone tells us not to do it. And, and I, you know, that, doesn't happen or, or very rarely happens that someone will say, hey, you know, stop sending me that, that newsletter. So, um, you know, the list is important, you know, start certainly your existing clients, your past clients, maybe I didn't mention that. I want to, you know, so past clients, I want them to be engaged because if they liked us the first time to hire us, when they've got a friend or a family member who needs our service or, you know, has a question or something, I want to be top of mind because again, so I, I was actually, I, I did a um, annual just physical checkup today and it was a brand new physician. I'd never, never gone there before. And they asked me, you know, I, I, you know, do you do this regularly? Like, you know, when was your last physical? I said, yeah, my last one I think was two years ago. And I could not 
I couldn't even tell you which hospital it was at, which doctor, nothing, no clue who it is. And they've never, so they've never followed up with me. Um, I literally could not tell it, tell me. So your clients who you think will remember you, who you think will call you when, when they need your services or refer you to a friend, if it's been a year, if it's been two years, if, certainly if it's been more than that, chances of them, of them remember you, remembering you are, are highly unlikely. But if you have shown up authentically, and we're talking about what's in the newsletter, but if you've shown up authentically every single month for two years, three years, four years, however long, um, they're going to remember you and, and they'll, they'll refer you. So existing clients, past clients, referral sources, potential uh, referral sources as well. And then, and then maybe there's, you know, your family and whatnot, but, um, I recommend you do it monthly. Again, I think, I think it's just, um, I, I think too much time can go by, can go by. I mean, heck sitting here in July, the summer, obviously it's been crazy with, with, you know, COVID and whatnot, but you know, I can't remember what happened a month ago, right? Like I, I've met with people, uh, cause in my business, I do a lot of lunches and breakfasts and meetings and stuff like that. And I've literally gone and met somebody had, you know, an hour meaningful conversation. And then a month later, I couldn't remember their name or something. And I'm sure that happens to, to a lot of people out there. So find a way, you know, that's why I say you just constant reinforcement, be in front of them, be authentic and provide value. And so that kind of talks, you know, speaks a little bit about what we actually want to put in that newsletter. So you know, my, my business is a great example. I cannot talk about death really at all, but I can't talk, I can't show up in somebody's, in somebody's mailbox talking about how to do a probate necessarily, or, you know, what happens after a loved one dies. I can't do that every single time, right? I, I, there might, there's a time and a place. And if you see, you know, if, behind me, I've got a you know, copy of my book that's titled, you know, what a loved one has, has died, you know, what now, but there's a time and a place for that. But in a monthly newsletter, what I'm usually doing is I'm having kind of just a, a, a personal article to open with. So this is maybe just something written by me, something that is, you know, maybe it's based on the month, right? So maybe if you've got like Mother's Day, maybe you write an article about, you know, how, how much your mom has, has shaped your life or, or if she was a terrible mom, you know, how, you know, maybe something else, but whatever you make it, you can make it relevant to the season, to Thanksgiving, to, to the holidays, to your birthday, to a family vacation. Um, but just something that's personal. So, you know, I'm trying to think what, what our last article, I think our last article, um, was, you know, about, about hurdles we've had to overcome. And I talked about hiking Machu Picchu and, you know, we had pictures of the hike and different things like that for Father's Day. You know, my dad's been a big, um, you know, role model inspiration for me. So we talked about that and had pictures of some trips we've taken together and, and things like that. So make it personal. I, again, the more you put out there, the more authentic, the more real it is. I think the more valuable uh, that your clientele, your, your people, who, your readership will, will value it. They'll be more engaged. What you don't want to do is, again, talking about putting, you know, probate or, you know, stuff like that in it. If you're a financial advisor, don't put about in these long articles about the markets and what the markets are doing. If, you, if you're a realtor, don't put, you know, what the market, again, same thing, what the market is doing, what the housing market is doing right now. Okay, maybe there's maybe there's a time and place, and maybe you, you every every other one you do kind of like a little update or something like that. But this needs to be fun and light, you know. I recommend you know put a recipe in there. People love recipes. I think those are one of the most. I think I don't know if this is accurate, but I thought I read cookbooks are one of like the most popular books, um, you know, most purchased books off Amazon or something is is cookbooks. Um, put a recipe on there. Put quotes on there. Put fun, silly facts on there. Um, put a how-to article, you know, how to, you know, plan the perfect picnic or something like that. Stuff that's like light and entertaining that is not too heavy because again, most of our businesses are not that interesting and most of our businesses um, are going to bore people or, and, or they're heavy topics. And if nothing else, even if you've got like a really 
fun business. Maybe you're like a dog groomer or, or dog walker or something with animals or, um, you know, I don't know, something like that where it's like, you know, oh, okay, that's like fun and whatnot. Still, people want to know about you. Like they don't want to know, you know, all the ways to, to shave a dog or to groom a, groom a pet or something like that. Like even though that's interesting to you, it's like not going to be interesting to everybody else. Right. So if like you're a, if you're a plumber, you're not going to talk about how to, you know, fix whatever the pipe in 10 minutes or less. I, I don't know, whatever. So make it interesting, you know, find, find a way to be, but make it fun. Right. So you want people to actually read this and it's crazy. So, so, you know, and if you guys have questions about that, I'd be happy to, you know, shoot you an idea or add you to our list so that you get a copy of it. So you can see the type of stuff that, that we write, which again, I think has really, you know, pretty good engagement and, and again, as you, as your business grows and as your referral sources grow, as your clients grow, it's impossible for you to pick up the phone and call every single one of your clients on like a regular, on a monthly basis. You're just not going to be able to, you know, once you get to a hundred then 200 and above, like that's a lot of time to build meaningful relationships with your, with your clients, with your referral sources, your past clients and, and all of that. This is a relatively easy way for you to stay engaged, for them to know you. I can't tell you, you know, how many times people will, you know, comment on it and they'll say, man, I love, loved your article or whatever. Like, oh, I've, I also hike there as well. Or yeah, my dad was a big role model for me as well. And I might not have like spoken with this person and it kind of like takes you aback. You're like, why are you, why are you telling me that? And then you realize, oh yeah, they they read the article. Um, so it's a it's just it it really is a great way to to keep in touch with people and and to keep you top of mind and and you would think you know I thought this for a while that like well shouldn't I be talking about like my business what I do listen if you're out there people know what you do right and and there's other platforms that you can use to promote your business right so if you're doing presentations you know you're going to promote that if you're going to do um you know, if you, your social media, you might be talking a little bit about that as well. But, but for, the, for this specific, what I would call marketing tool, marketing asset, it's really just about, it's just about uh, keeping top of mind awareness in a very meaningful and authentic way. One, one other thing I forgot that I was going to say too is that you can also use this um, to spotlight employees. So it's a great way to, you know, if you want to like highlight a member each, each month or every other month or something, and high, you know, depending on the size of your team, highlight new members. And maybe every once in a while you want to highlight a local business or a, a professional or referral source that you work with. Just think about it. You've got, you know, of all the people, th take your top like referral source, you know, so if you had him or her and maybe you do like a, you know, a little interview series where you just interview them and, uh, and do like a write up on the article and then promote that give them a copy, give them, you know, 30 copies to say, Hey, why don't you go give this to your, your friends and colleagues, let them see, let them see the article. And now they're promoting you as well. And you're getting your name out. So I think that's, you know, we just started, we just kind of started doing that. And I think it's been pretty, pretty effective. And uh, we're kind of starting to see some results from that as well. Again, you're highlighting a referral source. So you're already, you're strengthening that relationship with him or her, and then giving them copies and they're promoting it to, to their network. And now you're getting exposed and getting introductions to their to their network, which is which is great. So, um, is it a lot of work? Um, it can be. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we've I, I've done I've done a couple I've done this a couple different ways. I had started with a company, um, they were doing it. Then I brought it back in house, and I was doing it all myself. And so I was doing it um, just I was writing all of the articles. Uh, I had someone who was formatting it and then I had a co company who was printing it and I was giving them the list and they were mailing it. And, um, and it, just, it frankly got a little overwhelming for, for me where I'm at right now. So I brought on uh, a company, the newsletter pro, you can check them out. Um, you know, give them, give them my name. If you, if you check them out, the new, I think it's called the newsletter pro.com and they do, they do most everything for us. So they write the majority, you know, we, we, I edit it. I, I um, dictate a lot of it, but some of the more, you know, the recipes, the, the template type stuff they take care of. And so it's literally, oh, 
you know, 30 minutes of my time every month, very much worth it. Very much worth it. So there's other companies out there. That's just the one that we happen to use. You know, I think as it grows and as I have more of a staff uh, to help out, maybe we'll bring it back in-house. But for right now, it's been, it's been a great tool. And so, you know, again, talking in the very beginning, what I was mentioning, a lot of people were pulling back. I was speaking with the person who does a lot of my printing. So we send out a lot of different stuff. And she said, she, a lot of her clients have stopped the newsletter because revenues were down because of COVID. And I'm like, that's the dumbest thing you could possibly do right now. Like your people want to hear from you, even if you got to put it on a credit card or whatnot, like stay in front of them. You've been building those relationships with these people over time. Now is not the time that you want to, um, you want to lose those relationships and not keep that top of mind because out of sight, out of mind, they're, you know, people are at home, right? Most people are at home. They want, they're bored. They're like tired of doing the same thing, watching the same Netflix series, whatever. Your newsletter can be like something that they look forward to, that they're, they're engaged with. And maybe those prospective clients that didn't hire you three or four or five, six months ago, again, they got nothing else to do. They're reading, they're reading your material. They take that material. Now they're going to go look and they're going to look at your website. They're going to look at your social media and maybe they're going to give you a call again or give you a call for the first time. Um, those referral sources, same thing. Maybe, you know, they're, they're at home. They, they, maybe they're bored. Maybe they call and say, Hey, you know, you know, Justin's been a long time. Let's catch up. Let's do a, a zoom call or a zoom happy hour or, or whatever. So now is definitely not the time. Now I think it's a great time. Obviously revenues are down. It feels like one of the, cause one of the things I get asked a lot, well, how do you make money from it? What's the, what's the ROI on the, uh, on the newsletter? And the truth is I can't tell you that I've ever had somebody call me and say, Hey, listen, I saw your newsletter. Uh, I want to hire you. Right. I don't think it, it's, that's not its purpose necessarily. And that's not how it works. And I know that's frustrates from it's, it's still frustrating for me to some extent because you know, you, you want to know that it's quote unquote working. Well, that's not really what this is for. This is for maintaining that relationship. Maintain, just like, you know, if you're, I'm thinking like a financial advisor and you get a lot of your referrals from one specific CPA, well, you're going to find ways to, to keep in touch with that CPA. You want to maintain that relationship. Maybe you ask him or, him or her to go play golf, um, to, you know, you get them tickets to go to an event, something like that. Like you're just, you're just keeping that relationship. So like going to go play golf or going to go, uh, to, to a sporting event or whatever in and of itself is not going to bring in business, right? Like you, you might go to a group and they're not just going to say, Oh, thank you for this. Now that you did that, here's, here's, you know, here's a new case or here's a new client or whatever, but it enforces that it, it forces that what's the word. It, it, uh, continues that relationship, strengthens that relationship that, that you have with that person. So I think that's, that's what the, that's what this newsletter can do. Um, yeah, I think I think I've hammered you know hammered home on this enough, but but highly recommend it. Um, you know, if you guys have questions, email me Justin at probatefirm.com, uh, or you can go to our website um, probatefirm.com, and you can sign up, and we'll we'll get you you know we'll get you copies of it. Um, you know, I think it's you know especially now you want to you want to remind your clients that you're there, re remind your clients that you're you know you're still working, and uh, and maintain those relationships. So. Anyways, guys, hope you all found that useful. Uh, make sure to, uh, to subscribe, leave, leave comments below. And uh, if you have any questions, again, justin at probatefirm.com or check us out on the web, probatefirm.com. And uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. Stay safe. Bye.